Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Tuesday, December 20th, 2016. I wanted to go over trade ideas in this video. I will go over both the official trade ideas that are active, some of the ones that have either uh, hit a price target recently, some of these might have been stopped out. Um, what I'm doing is uh, taking a look at the trade ideas, and I clicked on that category and sorted by active swing trades. So this will include long and short trades, and I'm going to kick this video off starting out with some of the unofficial trade ideas. Uh, for those of you who are either gold members or free trial members, if you've been in the trading room, uh, you'll, you'll know that uh, for every one trade idea on the front page, I probably post half a dozen or more, uh, quite a bit more if you include the chart opinions that uh, other members ask. I'll put up charts if somebody has a position or trade they're watching trade idea. Um, I'm glad to share my, my thoughts on that. So let me start there with some of the unofficial trade ideas. And again, some of these may have been official trade ideas. We're looking at mankind here. Um, and that one was actually MNKD. That one was actually a trade idea officially that if I recall right was stopped out. Um, I gave my position a little more room. All it did is come in and back test. I had a relatively tight stop on it. Uh, I'm Going from memory, and I want to do this video quick, so I'm not going to go and reference all the notes on each of these trades. But if I recall right, we might have took it on a break out of this downtrend line here. Uh, had several downtrend lines, but you had a, a rising wedge pattern. I'm sorry, a bullish falling wedge pattern defined by these two white trend lines, with this being the primary downtrend line. So you really see a series of downtrend lines. Each of themselves were very valid. You can see the reactions break out near back test but this one you had a breakout that 60 cent or 68 cent level was a key level you can look at the line here and just look how many reactions there so this one was recently taken out and I believe I kept updating in the trading room we finally took out that level recently um, just yesterday on, on high volume look at the volume bars we even had good volume the day before that you can see very large volume uh, I don't know if you guys can make it out here I'll turn it up I have the volume kind of muted down. So you can see the large volume bar the day before on that doji. And then yesterday it took out that 68 cent level, which was very, very nice, well-defined resistance with a lot of reactions. Punched up. Um, the original price target on the official trade was 85 cents. And uh, go figure, the stock ran up to 0.849, so one-tenth of 1%. You know, I've had if I, I've had hundreds of trades come within a penny of a price target before reversing. It's just part of the game, but this one takes the cake with a one-tenth of a penny reversal. I had a, a sell limit order, but I decided to take it home, and it was up a little today. In fact, it came in funny. The high of the day was 87 cent, and I, 87 cents, I'm sorry, and I had a, a, you know, the actual resistance level is 89. So when you see this, what happens if I turn on a trend line there? If I turn on the price level, it pops up top and most of you guys know I like to set my price targets a little below the actual resistance level for that very reason. So a lot of times if all eyes are watching that level you can see how well defined the 89 cent level is. Um, prices you usually see people step in especially on these low price stocks takes profits just below. Um, so there it is so that one is now you know it, it cleared that level today the uh, 85 cent target now this is this is just a, a, a resistance level as well very well defined resistance and the volume is still coming in this stock it's trading up today uh, and the reason I'm highlighting it here um, for those of you that might not be in it it still has uh, put the potential to break above that 89 cent resistance level again you want to see it on volume you want to see the move impulsive you might want to wait for a 60 minute candlestick close because it's typical to get intraday pops these stop uh, buy stop clearing move uh, runs short stop clearing runs uh, only to see it fall back below so when you allow for a little bit maybe a 15 minute or a 60 minute candlestick close above that resistance level that will increase the odds especially if it's impulsive and you see more buying coming in and um, there there's certainly I could tell you there's a target if you wanted to take a earlier profits there is some resistance around this level here, which is 103. But I think if it clears that 89 cent level, I think it's a good shot. It goes up to here, 131. Set your sell limits just below that, maybe 128 or so. Um, you have a nice gap back here. You see the gap uh, there. You see a reaction high when the gap was backfilled. Uh, there's a gap back there. 
So that's a very nice target. And, you know, and down the road, if the, you know, the sector holds up or this stock, this is a low price stock. That's the thing, guys, about low price stocks, especially penny stocks. They tend to have a very low correlation with the market. And it's not unusual to see the market selling off and these guys rising or vice versa, the market going up and these guys going down. So uh, there's just a lot lower correlation. And one reason for that is you're not going to have a an index fund holding a penny stock. They don't hold. So I can assure you this is not in the S&P 500. It's not in the mid caps. It's not in the Russell 2000. Um, or at least I'm almost certain it's not um, being a penny stock. So uh, therefore, it's going to do what it wants to do. And right now, the chart's bullish because it's taken out this long-term trend line as well as that minor downtrend line, and it's done so on volume. It has some resistance levels to contend with, but uh, um, you know, there's nothing to say that this stock, uh, if the fundamentals are there, can't head all the way up there to uh, that 214 area. All right, so that one again is an unofficial one right now, as is. Uh, Teva. This is uh, one that we've been watching. Somebody brought this up in the trading room recently. Nice 60-minute bullish falling wedge. Very well defined. You can see numerous reactions here on this downtrend line. Um, it, it already tried to challenge that downtrend line, pulled back. So it's really sandwiched right now. It's interesting. It's sandwiched between support and resistance. You have really what, what shapes out to be a descending triangle pattern if you draw it this way um, those are inherently bullish patterns um, one way or another it, it looks like it's poised to break there now if it gives up this resistance i'm sorry support 3624 it could drop down and it, it could work its way lower within this this falling wedge slightly contracting channel uh, I'll draw it out give you something like this you know pull back and then go on to break out later but either way these are the levels to watch 3624 you know give or take a penny or so that is now support if prices break below that then that will be resistance as will this downtrend line so an ideal scenario would to see would be to see the stock take out both those levels um, but support is support until broken and you have this descending triangle pattern so you know, be on the lookout for a pop here. It could happen any time. You know, you had bullish divergence here at this low. Uh, you can see the bullish divergence. And these are all potential price targets up here. Uh, they're unadjusted. When I put these levels up like this, those are the actual resistance levels. You may want to sell uh, a little shy of that if you take this one. Here's what the stock looks like on a daily chart. Uh, that very steep downtrend. This $35 level, if I'm not mistaken, let's go back a ways. Yeah, that's actually long-term support too. And I had put, keep in mind guys, this is within the trading room. If you uh, go into the trading room, uh, a lot of these swing trade ideas I categorize by groups. So in the trading room on the right-hand sidebar, um, there's groups down below. So if you click on the swing trading group, you'll see a lot of posts on stocks like this, these unofficial trade ideas. And I'll tell you, the unofficial trade ideas on balance are have done very well lately you know there's always going to be winners and losers in there but a lot of these that don't make it to the front page have, have done really good so this one from a long-term perspective uh, you can certainly make the case for a bottoming play because it is at long-term support there's the reaction low that might be an all-time low or at least a decade long low uh, around that $35 level and look at that beautiful hammer this is a weekly chart again we're looking at look at that hammer right off support and so far the stock has held up. You can see the PPO starting to curl up. The stock is at rarely seen oversold levels. Um, that in the past, the only time it's it's actually haven't it has not been this oversold in, in, in at least this 10 years on this span here. This is the most oversold the stock has been. Last time it was close to that was right here. And that was good for a rally of we've got to move that line. That, that was good for a 32, 33% gain in, in relatively short order. So again, uh, I like this one as a bottoming play. Uh, and one of the members in the site posted something that they just came out with or they're about to introduce a, a, a delivery device for medical marijuana. Pretty interesting. You can check that out in the trading room. All right, uh, next one up would be WFM. Again, I'm starting out here with stocks that were posted in the trading room. Somebody asked my opinion on Whole Foods. Again, it's if you click on that swing trading group, just scroll down and order and you'll see it within the first page or two. Whole Foods, here's a downtrend line. Stocks breaking above. Remember, if you watched today's video that I said earlier, be, be, I'm, I'm very skeptical 
uh, and, and I'm being very judicious on long side or short side breakouts for that matter. Breakouts long or short in a low volume market have a higher chance to fail. But so far, what we see here, we see a big run up. A high volume was the move right up to that downtrend line. And um, so far we punched above it, but the volume is somewhat lackluster. So is a follow through. But either way, there's a breakout there. Uh, some divergence if I really were to draw it out here, but I'm not overly concerned with that at this time. Again, this I don't have the confidence right now to put this as a uh, an official trade idea on the front page, but there is a case to be made. In the bigger picture, there's still work to be done with Whole Foods. This is a long base, a big basing pattern right here, where you can see since about mid 2015, the stock has been basing. So there's two key levels to watch, and then this stock has the potential to to do well in 2017. First, we need to see it put this level, this trend line in the rearview mirror, a clear breakout. Maybe it wants to come in and back test. Uh, there's a lot of scenarios. I can't possibly draw them all. Maybe we run up to the top of that uh, basing pattern, pull back down, back test, and then finally break out. But either way, this is technical, bullish technical event number one is a breakout. Again, this one is suspect right now. It's not very impulsive. It's not confirmed with volume, but we are above the downtrend line. There's your next level right there around a little shy of 35. And then it's very thin between there. You can see this big gap over here. Uh, so I, I don't see really much resistance on this one all the way up to about 39.50, 39.60 or so. Uh, so a potential longer term play. Weekly chart, there you can see big strong bullish divergence there, divergent low, long term support. Not the best support, but pretty decent. We had some, some reactions back here, support as well as some here. So I call that a support zone. So there's some potential for Whole Foods. All right, next up would be uh, f -cell. This one's starting to run. I've been highlighting this one quite a bit in the trading room. Um, this is, it's, you know, a speculative low price stock, $2.18 right now. Here's some bullish divergence I didn't have drawn out on the chart, on the daily chart, but it's there as the stock falls down to what might be an all-time low, at least a multi-year low. But where I've been following this one closely is the 60-minute chart. I've been posting the stock since it was down here in this wedge, listing these levels. We had this uh, 198 level. I don't have it up here, but you can see it there. Uh, so it took that out. You can see how that level acted as resistance. There were a couple things. Most importantly is this bullish falling wedge pattern. Confirmed with divergence. When I first highlighted I don't think the divergence was confirmed yet. Now it is. We clearly confirm, so we have some pretty strong bullish divergence. It took out that 198 level after taking out the wedge and quickly popped up here. So this one so far, and again, it's unofficial, is good for about a 13% move. And now that 217 level, you'd see it punched above it a little momentum, but it's not really impulsively taken that level out yet. So if it continues higher, especially if the volume starts to come in this stock, there's been a little bit of volume. You can see that volume surge recently on this run. That's good. If it continues much higher, this is a thin zone uh, by uh, to the left. See all this? Very thin trading. You can tell by the volume of price histogram. There's not a lot of these green and red uh, horizontal bars. So this one, it's pretty smooth sailing uh, all the way up to 278. Uh, that's where the next resistance comes in. And to quantify that and uh, just to, to try to give you an idea how powerful these low price stocks can be, that's about a 28% gain. And that would be my next target on F-Cell. So again, this is another one because of the aggressive nature, low price, uh, very low volume, thinly traded. This typically doesn't meet my criteria for one of the official front page posts. But again, it's been quite a few updates in the trading room and uh, money has already been made, and there's still uh, the potential for a lot more if, if this one continues to follow through. That's F cell. G P R O. This was um, uh, member Pangblood mentioned this one a few weeks back, maybe a couple months back, and it was doing good. I I, I posted these targets uh, for him at the time, and it did. It went on to hit. I cannot remember where it was at the time, but that was my first target, which it hit that target almost to the penny. You can see, you zoom in there, pulled back, and um, has come back to support. Support being that previous uh, low right here back in May. So you have a stock now with the potential for a double bottom, almost a triple bottom. That one was almost there. And... Um, uh, this one also looks good longer term. Uh, so I think most of you know GoPro, the company, they make the, the cameras, the video cameras and drones and some other things now. So there it is from a longer term point of view. So 
not a lot of buy signals going on right now. Just one to keep an eye on for a reversal. Uh, you know, you can always take a shot here. But, you know, it's not unusual to see a stock once it comes down to lows like this, especially in this market, to have a little flush out move, wash out the last of the weak handed longs, and then reverse. Um, but there's some potential there for that one. Again, not, not front page or official uh, trade idea material yet, but uh, something to watch. AMKR, I think I might have mentioned this one within the trading room. I'm not sure if that was a front page trade idea or not. Uh, it's a semiconductor and a pretty well-defined trend line, as you can see there. Divergent high right there. You can see the negative divergence. The stock has broken down. It's back testing the wedge. I am still, I remain. There's a few semis run away. AMD looks like a freight train, but uh, uh, there's others that have rolled over. We even have some official, if I could have time in this video, I'll get to like Taiwan Semi and some others that are still well off their highs and they're profitable. We shorted them, you know, a month or more ago. Uh, so this one almost looks like a buying climax too here. Um, but either way, there it is. Bearish rising wedge, back test. Um, and plenty of downside. We have to look at a long-term chart. Mm. Uh, double top high is about all I see that stands out here. I do see divergence. I see this this peak and this peak in the uh, RSI lower while price is making an equal high. So you have that potential double top high there. Uh, all right, let's look at IONS. And again, I'm going through those that were mentioned in the trading room. Somebody asked me about this one. And it was back here at the time. I mentioned this downtrend line, this blue downtrend line. This was key. One, two, three, four, five, six reactions that finally broke through. Uh, it had potential divergence here. And there's a good good example. I talk about how divergences can be burned through. Sometimes they are. Uh, this one, let's say back here, it had the diver No, that wasn't divergence because prices weren't making a higher low. The divergence was right here. But it was burned through. Um, because now the PP or the MACD has made a higher high. So that one looks okay. Now there is a little bit of potential divergence forming here on this new high. Um, the follow through has been somewhat lackluster since this breakout. If you look closely, you can see here a little bit of a bump in volume right after the day it broke out, but not a whole lot. So not my favorite, but worth mentioning for those of you. Um, the case was made, uh, the member who shared this with me uh, is very, very knowledgeable about the uh, pharmaceutical biotech sector and uh, said this one has some good fundamentals. So I figure it's worth passing along. Let's see if there's anything on the weekly chart. Uh, that's what it looks like on the weekly chart. There's that same downtrend line. See here it had a divergent high. You can see going back here, rising wedge pattern, divergent high, broke down, back tested, and that played out as it should have. Now you have a, uh, well, no, no divergent low. Um, but definitely a breakout above the downtrend line. All right, let's move on. So again, something there. If, if you did take it, then you just want to see right here. This would be the level. Uh, not so much that downtrend line. If I were to take this one, which I do not have a position in, 47.77, so knock that down by a few pennies, call it 47.75, 72 maybe, that would be my stop. The reason is when you have a stop based on a back test of a downtrend line, well, a downtrend line has a negative slope. That means prices get lower and lower every day throughout time. So if you back test, wait over here a few months later, you're getting underwater. Uh, there's pretty nice horizontal support there around 47.77. You can see it going through quite a few reactions to the left. And uh, that's that's where my stop would be on that one if you want to let it ride. Okay, what's up next? Um, that was IONS. Oh, Kara. Kara might be, I can't recall if that's an official trade idea or not. I know I've covered it extensively in the trading room as an unofficial trade idea. Going back to, gosh, if I'm not mistaken, right here, I think when it was basing, breakout, hit the targets, pulled back, recycled. I had a, some great trades in this one personally. Long, short, back long again. And the bigger picture was this symmetrical triangle. I know you guys see a lot of lines. It's a busy chart. Horizontal lines are just support resistance levels. These downtrend lines form a symmetrical triangle pattern right here and here. And this one broke out, ripped above it, came back, back tested, ripped up against one, once more, back tested, moved up again. Um, and really, it seems to be this area here we need to punch through to, to 
a lot of a lot of supply right here. A lot of trades stopping just shy of the top of this, uh, or just right around the top of this resistance zone, if you will. So I think once, if and when we can get above that level, it looks healthy. And uh, we've already hit that $11 target once, fell just shy that 13.33, and that would certainly be my next target. You can see how it's pretty well defined going back here. A lot of reactions. Uh, that's the next target. And then ultimately, I like the fundamental story in this one. It's a small biotech, very small biotech, but uh, some promising things they're working on. And, you know, given enough time, that one might head up to that $18 area and then some. Uh, the bearish case will be if it just can't. You know, you don't want to see too many more back tests. It's already back tested this line twice now, this, this downtrend line. Uh, I'd prefer to not take out those lows. I still have a position, just a long-term position. I'm not, I was trading it pretty actively, swing trading it here. Now I've sort of just tucked some away on that last run, but uh, I don't want to see it get below that level, those recent lows right there around 850. Then I'll probably either sell all or some of it and uh, then wait till the charts firm up before entering again. STNG, Scorpio Tankers, if I recall right, this was an official trade idea, uh, may still be. You know what, I have to check. I was, I was gonna try to wrap this video up covering both all the official trade ideas as well as the unofficial. I started out here with the unofficial trade ideas, going through the ones that I'd posted recently in the trading room, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it there. Uh, because this video has now hit the 20 minute mark, uh, just past that actually, and uh, I'll do the official trade ideas on another video. But I wanted to share these because official, unofficial, you know, if I share a trade idea, it looks good. I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, and as I said, sometimes unofficial trade ideas are on fire, sometimes they don't pan out. Um, and I know a lot of you guys like to take those. So I'm sharing this for both the gold members that have access to the trading room and the silver members uh, because these are trade ideas. And, and lately, it's been a tough market, so my the new trade ideas have been on the light side. Uh, it's just reflective of a choppy sideways market. And um, this one, uh, the bigger picture here, you have this downtrend line that was taken out here. So what I think happened, if I recall right, we had this breakout and it proved to be a false breakout. We fell back in. This was a, a minor uptrend line and still is. That's something to watch. It came down, it hit that uptrend line, and I may have pointed that out, I can't recall. It found support on that uptrend line and has now moved back up above the previous, the, the, the primary downtrend line. And so what you have here really, if you look closely, let's do this, you have horizontal resistance here. That's probably a level I, I should have, in hindsight, I probably should have pointed that out. See the reactions from above right here, and then the reactions from below uh, right here. You actually have a couple reactions around that area. There's some from above, almost one right there. Reaction from below, reaction from below, and most certainly, most importantly, some reactions there. So now this is a level. Uh, I didn't have it before, but I'm giving it to you now. 459, let's call it 460. Really to be safe when I have a level like that, but you see these previous reaction highs, we've had two momentum pierces above it. So to be safe, uh, the the probably the safest long entry is above those recent reaction highs, which come in at 469. So you add a penny to be safe. So 470, 470, and that one should run. It will have cleared out all that recent trading. And these were the targets before, and they they would still be my next targets. And you know if things get really good, if the shipping sector holds up and the market holds up. Uh, this one has a possibility to go up to 755. All right, one more. Um, this one might need a little work. Uh, this is another one, again, I mentioned in the trading room. PIOI, this used to be, this is active power. I think the symbol is ACPC, if I'm not mistaken. It had changed uh, ticker symbols. Uh, but there's a, a couple interesting things to note here. There's first, first and foremost is the bullish divergence. Uh, this one has a lot of you know, it's it's been as low as, well, uh, there was a, looks like a brief spike. A lot of movement here. Might be better with using a PPO on this chart. It's still going to show you the same thing. Bullish divergence, uh, whether you use the PPO or the MACD, which I have below the RSI. Divergence across the board. So any way you want to slice or dice it, this one has bullish divergence in place. 
and a well-defined downtrend line. That's really all I need to see in a stock. Most importantly, the well-defined downtrend line because that provides an objective entry. Now, it's a low price stock. It's a penny stock. That means this thing's going to move. It's going to be volatile. Uh, you'll have these intraday pierces sometimes. That's that's due to the, you know, the momentum overshoot here. This one was flying up, sh overshot that trend line intraday, but fell back below. So really a daily close. If you get an intraday break, you could take the breakout at that point, but you want to see it on above average volume. Um, so this one, again, I'll, I think I already have it, but just to make sure, I'll set another alert, trend line alert over there. And if that happens and that one runs up here at about 43 cents, depends where it breaks out. That would be good for a move of about 68, 69. Oh, well, well, if I put it right on there, that's 70%. I'll take that. And on that, I like that also as a target because I love when I see intersecting support or resistance levels, and that's the case here. So let's just say hypothetically this one's primed to reverse and break out soon. It's going to come in and run up and hit both those, uh, the horizontal resistance level and the downtrend line right around the same area, roughly 45 cents for that 70% or so gain. Then above there you have resistance, uh, looks about 55 cents, and then a big old gap to fill if this thing really gets some traction. Um, but as with any penny stock, there's a tremendous amount of risk. These things can, you can wake up tomorrow if you're long and, and find out they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. And may hell, maybe they have already. I don't know. Maybe that's why, well, it's not a, that, that symbol doesn't indicate it. But uh, there was a big flush out move here. Uh, and undoubtedly, their uh, uh, fundamentals are probably questionable. Otherwise, the stock wouldn't be selling at 20 cents a share, especially the fact that it was, you know, a $3 stock back here. And uh, going back a few more years, it was a $15 stock. So you can see this is obviously a company on the on the downtrend, but a potential bottoming play. And even if you don't want to marry it and hold it as a long-term investment, you can certainly trade it. And like I said, you know, there's looks like a... Uh, if you don't want to go for the full 70% pop, then there's a chance right here of about a 30, up to the 32% mark. If it broke out, that would be roughly 20, roughly 20% 20 or so. All right, we'll end it there and I'll do an official, uh, a, a video on the official trade ideas under a, a separate, uh, separate video soon.